Welcome back to transitioning to Angular 2.0, where we are refactoring the John Papa hot towel project into component-based directives. So far, we've been able to refactor our container object um, and to reuse now with people, news, and over on the admin page, um, as well as um, we we're able to refactor and create component-based directives for this people grid and our news feed here. So our next step is looking at resolving data for controllers uh, before the controller is loaded. So if we go over John Papa's uh, style guide, he talks about route resolve promises and um, why you'd use those and, and whatnot. Um, definitely this is great reading. Uh, you need to understand when and uh, when not to use these. And um, in this example, we're just going to go ahead and cover how you would go ahead and implement this in this project. All right, so we're going to come over here and we're going to go to our features and open up our dashboard and look at our route here. So our route um, specifies that the dashboard route is on the root URL. Here's our template. Uh, we're using controller as. Um, there's some other settings and whatnot um, that are used here. However, it does not have a resolve. So for our resolve, um, for getting data into the controller, we want to go ahead and create a resolve object here on this um, existing object and we want to have a couple different pieces of data returned. So we're going to do message count. We are going, we want to be able to load people data and we want to be able to get our news data. All right, great. So unfortunately though, we don't have any methods already declared for these. So the next step of this is to change and add a couple of name functions here. Message count. All right. And we want to get this from the data service. Data service and data service dot get message count. All right, and we just want to return that. All right, great. Now in this case here though, we need to inject data service into message count. And the easiest way to do that, follow what we've been doing already is using dollar sign inject. And we are going to inject data service directly into this function. All right. Um, so now we need to people. Actually, I'm going to copy this line and people dot inject data service. Now we're going to have a function called people, and that is going to have a data service in it as well, and that is going to return data service dot get people. Great. And then the last one, function news. And in this case here, I'm actually going to go to the news directive and pull this directly out. And I'm just going to go ahead and remove this. Go back over here. And we are going to return this right here. All right, so now what has happened here is before this controller is actually given control, the resolve will have to resolve for all three um, of these methods. So if any one of these methods fail, then um, it will throw a, an error that we can, we can handle and alert the user to. However, it would not go ahead and route directly to the controller. This can be useful when we need to check a piece of data before we actually allow a controller to load and it, that then may redirect them to another uh, controller instead. So in that case, we could actually have our method go out and load data. And let's say if the message count was under 50, that we wouldn't take them to dashboard. Um, or let's say it was greater than 50, we wouldn't take them to dashboard. We'd take them straight to their inbox where they could see all of their mail and uh, they could, they could uh, address that. So um, those types of business rules would be difficult to be able to implement and not have some flashing going on, um, going first to the, the uh, 
dashboard uh, feature and then to the inbox feature. So um, this type of functionality allows us to do this before um, the actual content gets loaded. All right, so great. Now we have data that uh, we can inject into our controller. So now if we come back over to our dashboard controller. All right, so now we're going to come over to our dashboard controller. And now we, what we want to do is we want to inject um, into the dashboard um, the new pieces of data that we have resolved uh, on our route. So we're going to have to make a couple adjustments here. Um, what we're going to do is go ahead and change these to message count, people, and news. And ah, sometimes it's easier to type it. All right, people and news. All right, excellent. So now these three um, items are being injected directly into our dashboard controller. And on these now, we need to go ahead and we're going to set our message count equal to our message count. We're going to play this, that on the view model. Our VM dot people equals people and VM dot news equals news. Great. And everything else that's in here can go away. All right. We still have, oh, news. There we go. So thank you. That looks good. So now what we have is we have our route that are resolving these three pieces of data and we are now injecting them directly into our dashboard controller. And so, let's see. Now, the next step on this is we're gonna need to modify our dashboard HTML so we can inject this data directly into the pieces that need them. So, the first step with that is uh, we look here, message count. Well, we don't have to change that one because the message count itself is being handled, um, already being set, and it's being passed in, so that one's okay. And we did, did not uh, refactor that one yet to actually do the uh, message count as a directive. So then on the people controller, we can go ahead and say people equals VM dot people and we can say news equals vm dot news all right excellent so now what we're doing is we're actually injecting into the people directive a property called people that is getting the value from our dashboard controller of vm people so this is going to be an array of people and this is going to be an object of news um, injected each one of those now if we come over here and we rerun it. All right, great. That looks good. We, we lost our news, though, um, and our people are still rendering. And the reason being is that when we did our resolve, we actually cut and pasted from the news directive what was in here. And on the people one, it is still manually uh, loading the people data. So we're going to change that really quick. Let's go ahead and fix the news uh, one first, though. And we're going to go ahead and create a new property. It's of type object. And we're going to go ahead and place it um, onto the scope. Because we're doing bind to controller, news is actually going to be vm.news. Um, bind to controller will go ahead and handle that for us. We'll save that. And now you can see we have news displaying. All right, great. So let's go look at the people directive. So in this case here, we're still loading people, and we no longer need to do that. So let's go ahead and remove that. And we'll actually remove the array there as well. And our case here, we're going to go ahead and modify our isolated scope. I'm going to create a property called people, set it to type object, and we're going to go ahead and save it. Excellent. And now you can see we have it. All right, so let's go ahead and take this back off really quick, just to prove what's actually happening here. See, now we have no data. So it wasn't smoke and mirrors. This is actually what's happening. The process happens from the dashboard route, it resolves, goes and loads people, and then the dashboard controller actually has the people injected directly into it, and those are placed onto the VM. Uh, from the VM, uh, the view model here, 
when we're creating the directive, we can go ahead and assign, and this is the way that we pass data to directives or any sort of properties, whether they be um, like what we're doing here, title and color. We do these with an isolated scope, and then we can go ahead and pass the data to it. So from the controller's view model, we're passing the people into a new property on the people directive called people. I know that's quite a mouthful. Maybe we should have named that data or something else to make it a little easier to understand. Um, all right, we'll go ahead and place that code back in, save it, and we can see it's refreshed and now that we, um, we now have the data back in there. All right, so what we've learned is how to successfully apply a resolve to a route to inject our data into our controllers. But I think the most important part to understand about this is when not to do this. So what we find is, is that we evaluate on a case-by-case -case basis when we're going to actually use a resolve. If we are using a third-party resource that could be down um, or let's say it's extremely slow um, or if we have a long-running process that actually pulls a lot of data uh, to be able to display in some sort of grid, then we would want to go ahead and not put that into a resolve. And we would actually want to come over and have that happen um, either inside of our controller here or with the directive itself. That's really a preference thing. Um, most likely we wouldn't want to do it in the controller. Um, again, because contro uh, controllers are going away. And so we'd want to place that, let's say if we were the people load was a, a long running piece, then we'd want to go ahead and handle it in here and have it be based off some ng init or some other mechanism to go ahead and fire that off. All right, that's everything uh, that we're going to cover in this video on how to handle resolves. And next time we're going to cover how to test each one of these directives. All right, thanks so much.